Hi class, in this lecture I want to continue our applications of integration talking by, by, about fluid pressure and fluid force. Alright, so basically the only objectives we're going to do in this uh, lecture here is talk about how you find fluid pressure and how you find fluid force. Okay, so first off um, I want to talk about pressure. So how would we define pressure in mathematics and in physics? So pressure is defined as the force per unit of area over the surface of a body. Okay, so and then we'll talk about like the pressure you put on a sheet of metal or the pressure you push when you push down wood, something like that. So in general, the pressure that's being exerted um, on, on, on this body is proportional to the depth of the object that it is in the fluid. So we're pushing this water down into the fluid, into some, like say, water. So when I say pressure is proportional to the depth, what that means is, is that the further you go down depth-wise, the, the more water pressure you have, basically or fluid pressure. So the definition of fluid pressure is the following. The pressure P, so P is pressure, of an object at depth H in a liquid is the pressure is equal to just a simple multiplication of W times H. And this is where W is what we call the weight density of the liquid per unit of volume. So the weight density of the liquid um, is different for, for different liquids or different fluids. So let me show you on this, this slide right here, I have some common weight densities of fluids in pounds per cubic feet. So, you know, as for example, just going down the list, you know, the most common one will deal with water. So this is the uh, weight density of water. But then if you look at the weight density of mercury, it's vastly different. It's a much, much heavier, much denser type of fluid. Okay, so when calculating fluid pressure, you can use an important physical law called Pascal's Principle, named after the mathematician. So Pascal's Principle states that the pressure exerted by a fluid at a depth eight is transmitted equally in all directions. Okay, so for example, you take these, these objects here. There's three of them. They're the same object, but they're, they're positioned differently in the water. If you look at the arrow pointing at the object, it's, it's hitting the object in the same, um, same place. So the pressure is being um, the pressure here is the same coming at the point here as it is here as it is here. Okay, so the so the position of it doesn't necessarily change the pressure. The pressure is still constant in all directions, or not constant, transmitted transmitted equally in all directions. Excuse me. Okay, so because fluid pressure is given in terms of force per unit area, so pressure here is equal to force divided by area. The fluid force on a submerged horizontal surface area, so we have a surface area that's laying horizontal like this, and this is just the fluid force on the surface area, is equal to fluid force, which we'll define as F, is equal to pressure times the area. So the area of a horizontal surface is pretty easy to, to find. This pressure going back is going to come from this formula right here. Okay, the definition of the fluid pressure. So you're going to take the weight density and multiply it by the height, just so we're clear. All right, let's do an, an example so you can see this. Find the fluid force on a rectangular metal sheet measuring 3 feet by 4 feet that is submerged in 6 feet of water, as shown in this figure. So I'm going to take this metal sheet and I'm pushing it down 6 feet. So what is, what is the um, fluid force on the object right now? Well, going back, this is fluid force. Fluid force is pressure times area. So the first thing we need to figure out is what is the pressure. All right, so because the weight density of water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, and the sheet is submerged in six feet of water, that fluid pressure is just P is equal to the weight density times the, the depth, so 62.4 times six which is just 374.4 pounds uh, per square foot. Okay, so now what the next thing we need to do is figure out the total area. Well, this is easy. Uh, easy, it was just a rectangular metal sheet. So area is equal to the three feet by four feet, which gets just 12 square feet. So thus the fluid force, obviously here, force is equal to pressure times area. Well, we found the pressure here, multiply it by the area. So 374.4 times 12, gets me 4,492.8 pounds because the square feet here cancel out. All right, so this result is independent. This is interesting, uh, uh, independent of the size of the body of water. So the fluid force would be the same if you were in a swimming pool or if a lake or if you were in the ocean. It, the fluid force would be exactly the same. 
Okay, so now let's move into the, some little bit of calculus stuff here. So the force F exerted by a fluid of constant weight density, okay, so the fluid has constant weight density per unit of volume against a submerged vertical plane, all right, region, so it's not a horizontal plane, it's a vertical plane now, from Y is equal C to Y is equal D is given as, and I'm just going to skip right to the, um, the integral here. It's W, which remembers the weight density, as the integral from C to D of some function we call h of y times l of y dy. Okay, so what is the h of y and l of y? So h of y is the depth of the fluid at y, okay, so how far down the, the fluid is, and l sub y is the horizontal length of the region. Okay, so we have depth and horizontal length. All right, so we'll do one example of this so you can see this in action here, okay? So a vertical gate, vertical gate in a dam has the shape of an isosceles trapezoid, eight feet across at the top and six feet across at the bottom, all right, with a height of five feet as shown in this figure. So this is the isosceles trapezoid. Here's the eight feet, here's the six feet part, and here's the height, the, the, the five feet, okay? What is the fluid pressure of the gate when the top of the gate, so here's the top of the gate, is four feet below the surface. Okay, so here's the thing. First off, um, you know that you're, we're looking at four feet under, but how many total feet under is the object? So if you look, it's the four feet plus the five feet, so it's all the way down to nine feet, okay? So what I'm kind of putting together here is from here to here, okay? The plane region, the plane vertical region from here to here. So it looks like the plane vertical region goes from here to here. That's interesting, okay? So the next thing we need to do in setting up a mathematical model for this problem, you are at liberty to locate the x and y axis in several different ways. Um, I'll show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to set it up just like at the origin here. A convenient approach is to let the y axis bisect the gate and the plane, the x axis to the surface of the water, okay? So here's the x axis. Here's the y-axis, as I've shown, okay? So now, what is the depth? The depth of the water at y feet is equal to the following. So notice that here's the origin. So as we go down the origin, we have negative, negative values of y. So we're going to have our height actually be negative y. So it's going to change those negative values to positive because we're talking about the depth. So the depth is going to be a positive report here, okay? So looking back, that's my h of y, okay, the, the height of the fluid, okay, and look, it's going to go from here to here, okay. So the next thing is we need uh, this, this thing called L of y. So going back, L of y is the horizontal length of the, the region, okay, so this is going to be the horizontal length right here. Okay, so to find the length L of Y of the region at Y, find the equation of the line forming the right side of the gate. Okay, so we're gonna find the line here and then I'll talk about where we go next. So here, we're gonna find the equation of this line. So, you know, you just take this point here and this point here and you just, you, you know, you can find the slope and then go from there, use the point slope formula, okay? So going forward, what we see here, and I'll go back, you end up getting, just using any method to find the equation of the line, you end up getting y is equal to 5x uh, minus 24. But looking back here, okay, we want this in terms of a function of y. So I'm going to take this and solve it, solve it for x so that it's, it has the y in it. So in figure in that figure I showed, you can see that the length of the region of y is two times this. Okay, the reason is because we only did one side, but there's two sides of it. So we're going to multiply it by two because this is one side, this is the other side. That's where this two comes from. Okay, so this becomes two fifths times y plus twenty four. So from here, you're going to integrate, finally, as I talked about, from that net value of 9 feet under, so from negative 9 to negative 4. So you can calculate the fluid force by the following. W gets replaced by the weight density of water. You're going to integrate from negative 9 to negative 4. 
we said the height was negative y. Okay, then our function for L of y was 2 fifths times y plus 24. And, you know, you can very easily do the algebra here to integrate this. And you can see that these very simply integrate to the following. Plugging this in and simplifying, you get the following. There's roughly 13,936 pounds of pressure on this gate. All right, class. I hope this helped, and um, this will conclude our lectures on the applications of integration for this section.